Apple has its corporate headquarters nestled in the heart of Cupertino, California, in a magnificent $5 billion building known as Apple Park. The structure is renowned for its architecture and curved glass design and has earned itself the nickname of the Spaceship, thanks to its impressive scale. This awe-inspiring campus is spread across 360 acres of land and is home to over 12,000 employees in the central four-story circular building, covering an area of approximately 64 acres. However, what has caught the attention of many lately is not just the architectural feat of the construction, but the method in which it's powered. Despite previous differences between respective CEOs Tim Cook and Elon Musk, in a landmark partnership, Tesla is supplying Apple Park with its Megapack batteries, paving the way for sustainable energy usage on an unprecedented scale. In this video, we'll explore the significance of this monumental partnership, the technology behind Apple Park's source of power, and the implications of this collaboration for the future of Apple and Tesla's renewable energy initiatives. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of financial data going back 15 years, and it's all freely available. What sets Apple Park apart from other corporate headquarters is its emphasis on natural beauty. The sprawling campus houses thousands of Apple employees, over 9,000 trees, a 30-acre solar panel field, and boasts the world's largest naturally ventilated building. The rooftop of the building itself is also covered in solar panels, highlighting Apple's long-term commitment to renewable energy. Apple co-founder Steve Jobs envisioned a campus that was not reminiscent of a mundane business park, but rather resembled a serene nature refuge. To that end, a staggering 80% of the site is dedicated to green space, embellished with drought-resistant trees and plants indigenous to the Cupertino area. Moreover, the central courtyard contains an artificial pond, contributing to the pervasive serenity of the entire campus. At the same time, Apple Park has become an iconic symbol of modern architecture and forward-thinking corporate culture. With its focus on sustainability and eco-friendliness, combined with an immense scale and stunning beauty, the campus is a truly inspiring location that embodies the values of the Apple brand. And this is why Apple has decided to invest so heavily in its expansion of renewable energy initiatives. In 2021, Apple announced that it had allocated a total of $4.7 billion since 2016 to fund 17 green bond projects, and the company reiterated this initiative just days ago. It also publicized its plans to become carbon neutral across its entire business, manufacturing, supply chain, and product life cycle by 2030. Now back in 2015, Apple announced plans to build an $848 million solar farm in Monterey County, and it tapped the expertise of First Solar to lay solar panels in a new project called the California Flats Solar Project. This project would supply energy to Apple's corporate headquarters, data centers, and even stores within California. While the project was successfully executed over multiple years and expanded on over time with multiple different solar technologies, the solar power is still only available when the sun is shining. If there's cloud cover or when the sun goes down at night, the solar farm could immediately be rendered ineffective, causing the power usage to shift back to the grid. And so in 2021, Apple's Vice President of Environment, Lisa Jackson, acknowledged this issue, saying that the challenge with clean energy, solar and wind, is that it's by definition intermittent. But it was at this time that Apple decided to mitigate this problem by aiming part of its $4.7 billion in green bond investments at a new utility-scale battery project that would transform the existing solar system by storing excess energy and providing useful power around the clock for Apple's operations. This new battery-based solar system would be leveraging Tesla's industrial megapack product. Apple's VP of Environment commented by saying that the company hopes the new battery farm 
will reduce hesitancy around companies switching to renewable and clean energy. She stated, if we can do it and we can show that it works for us, it takes away the concerns about intermittency and it helps the grid in terms of stabilization. It's something that can be imitated or built upon by other companies. Now this is very interesting for a number of reasons. At the time when Apple started this project, it appeared that the company itself was a little hesitant about its investments in giant batteries. Nothing was for certain, and so Apple was taking a bit of a gamble by betting on Tesla's battery technology to power their renewable efforts. That said, Apple has deep pockets, making it easier to take this risk as part of its green bond initiative, and also prove out this large-scale deployment of batteries in California, one of the largest battery projects of its kind in the country. The project aimed to store 240 megawatt hours of energy, enough to power more than 7,000 homes for a day, and again used to complement the solar power being transmitted to Apple's headquarters and other facilities in the state of California. Tesla had just come out with a large-scale commercial megapack in 2019, and just under two years later, Apple was already partnering with the company to deploy 85 megapacks as part of its initiative. This is a substantial risk for any investor, although Tesla did have a track record at the time, deploying commercial scale battery systems with its power pack product that had been deployed in industrial uses since 2012. The other aspect of this is that the partnership with Apple helped to solidify confidence in Tesla's large scale deployments. Even Apple states that they wanted to show others that this type of project was very doable and that it could be copied and imitated by other companies. Interestingly, Apple CEO Tim Cook and Tesla CEO Elon Musk appeared to not get along for many years, as the two companies were competing for talent. For instance, at one point in 2015, Elon Musk called Apple a graveyard for staff that was fired from Tesla, saying that if you don't make it at Tesla, you go work at Apple. Elon Musk had also recalled that at one point, he had reached out to Tim Cook about Apple buying Tesla when Tesla was on the verge of bankruptcy, and Tim Cook refused to meet with him. And more recently, there was a misunderstanding about Elon Musk's Twitter being kicked out of the Apple App Store. However, the two CEOs eventually and finally came together and resolved their issues. But even during some of these tense times, the two companies have been partnered on this battery project. One of the reasons for this is that the companies were never in direct partnership. They've been working through a company called Aravon, which was spun off by an asset management firm named Capital Dynamics. Aravon is a renewable energy company that provides customized services to clean energy project owners, utilities, and corporations. They may be one of the main reasons why this unlikely partnership between Elon Musk and Tim Cook has been working for multiple years. The California Flats solar deployment was invested through Aravon starting in 2017 and appears to have nothing to do with Tesla's solar division, even though Tesla produces solar panels and solar roof products from its Buffalo Gigafactory in New York. It's also unrelated to the solar panels on top of Apple's corporate headquarters in Apple Park, which were also provided by First Solar. However, to complement the solar farm at California Flats, Aravon contacted Tesla and purchased their equipment in order to build a battery farm right next to the giant solar deployment, capable of powering 100,000 homes for a year. Just days ago, in April 2023, Tesla released a video of the new completed battery deployment. While the large array of solar panels were highlighted in the video, this was already there prior to Tesla's venture with Apple through Aravon. Aravon has also signed multiple supply agreements with Tesla for battery storage systems. Its Falcon portfolio aims to offer a project capable of 2 gigawatts of power and 6 gigawatt hours of storage capacity. This is multiple times the size of the California Flats project, which is for 60 megawatts and 240 megawatt hours to retrofit the existing 280 megawatt solar plant where Apple is an off-taker of the energy. Therefore, they would be purchasing the electricity from the power generator, which is Aravon. Apple's Cupertino headquarters is about an hour's drive away from Monterey's solar and battery farms, 
where the Tesla Mega Packs were installed. There is indeed a distance of around 80 miles between Monterey and Cupertino, and so it's unlikely that the power generated at the Monterey Solar Farm would be transmitted directly to Cupertino through power lines due to the long distance. It's more likely that the power generated at the solar farm is fed into the grid at a nearby substation, where it's then distributed to various locations, including Cupertino, where Apple's headquarters is located. The power grid is designed to distribute power over long distances, and the energy losses incurred during transmission can be minimized through traditional ways, by stepping up the voltage of the power with transformers to reduce the amount of current required to transmit the same amount of power. Now the battery facility in California became operational in 2022 and is said to have cost over $100 million and will reduce annual CO2 emissions by 109,000 metric tons, equivalent to taking 22,000 cars off the road. To be clear, this project doesn't make use of Tesla's latest Megapack technology since Aravon ordered the batteries in 2021. The original Megapack was a 3 megawatt hour system, while today's Megapack is a larger 3.9 megawatt hours. That's why the reported 85 Megapacks roughly add up to 240 megawatt hours of capacity. It also appeared that Aravon was paying about $1.17 million on average per Megapack, while today's prices are much higher but for a larger pack. The same order today would average almost $2 million per Megapack and due to the high demand, won't be available until 2025 from Tesla's website. Others are also investing heavily in Megapack, as Tesla has deployed 6.5 gigawatt hours of energy storage in 2022, about 27 times that of the California Flats project, which powers Apple Park. That said, Tesla is in the process of ramping up its mega factory in Lathrop, California, which will be capable of producing up to 10,000 Megapacks per year or 40 gigawatt hours, considerably higher than the 6.5 gigawatt hours that Tesla produced last year, and hopefully reducing the lead time before a megapack can ultimately be delivered to a customer. Although Tesla will likely begin work on more battery producing mega factories over the coming years, and continuing to improve the size and energy density of the megapack and its industrial scale products. Apple's investment through Aravon represents a small fraction of Tesla's energy business, but is certainly a positive step for encouraging others to move rapidly towards renewable solutions. Aravon chose Tesla for a reason, highlighting the quality of their product and service for Apple's initiatives. Apple itself, along with its over 250 global manufacturing partners and suppliers, have announced this week that they've expanded their renewable energy to 13.7 gigawatts, putting Apple on a path to decarbonize the company by 2030. And so there's a rapid movement to couple solar and wind with battery packs, which will span all of the suppliers in Apple's supply chain. This trajectory is why Elon Musk believes that Tesla's energy division can ultimately be as large as automotive. It's also interesting that Tesla doesn't mention Apple in its recent Cal Flats video, and Apple doesn't mention Tesla in its press release even though the companies are indirectly working together, with Tesla being an integral part of Apple's energy solution. Apple has never liked to be mentioned by other companies, and one of the reasons is that they like to be the ones to formulate and deliver the message the way they want to to their audience. At the same time, the media continues to write about how Apple and Tesla are competitors in the self-driving space, and they've been doing this for the past at least eight years. If anything, this is currently a negligible part of Apple's business in terms of revenue or profits. And while Apple has integrated CarPlay into competing vehicles for infotainment, a self-driving car requires a massive fleet bringing in streams of data which Apple doesn't have. So for the time being, whether they like it or not, Apple and Tesla are more partners than they are competitors. So do you think this partnership involving both Apple and Tesla will drive more innovation in renewable energy? And does this help put Tesla on a path where Tesla energy will eventually be as large as automotive? Don't forget to watch my video on Tesla's new Mexico Gigafactory. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.